How many things can I do wrong while building this homemade DIY carpenter bee trap? Mistake after mistake. What was I thinking? I'm surprised I was able to complete this carpenter bee trap. I messed up so many times building this thing. You're not going to believe it. I built a no cost DIY carpenter bee trap back last spring and we are super happy with how it's working. So I decided to try a homemade, different, completely new design. I'll share a link to that other video in the description. I want my two by fours to be sharp on the edges and these are rounded. So I'm just gonna run it through my table saw to take off the rounded edge so I have a nice sharp corner. The thing is, you want to use wood that is old and weathered. The last thing you want to use, if you can help it, is brand new fresh wood. Because the carpenter bees are looking for worn out wood. So here's my sharp edge and I'm just making a line where I want to cut them off about four and a half inches for the sides of the trap. It's really important that you get this exact because you want all four pieces the same length so they match perfect. And there's all four pieces with the sharp corners so they'll fit together tight with no light. And they're all exactly the same length. I'm just going to sand off the edge a little bit where the saw splinters up the wood. This isn't really necessary, but it'll just ensure the pieces fit together real tight. So just run a little bit of sandpaper around the edges from the saw blade. And there we go. And you can see how the four pieces are going to fit together to make a perfect square on the outside and a perfect square on the inside. Now, Many of you have voiced your opinion about trapping carpenter bees, your concern about how important they are for pollinating. Yes, carpenter bees are super important and critical pollinators. I get it, I really do. We have acres and acres of woods and they are free to use all of that for their homes. We do not use any chemicals on them, none at all, and we don't feel bad about trapping the ones that want to make a home in our house. I'm going to pre-drill the holes, two in each piece for the deck screws that are going to hold the four pieces of wood together. So just drill hot down through each piece, one at the top and one at the bottom, so the deck screws don't split the wood. So here's our pre-drilled holes, and this area here is gonna be the open spot in the middle. So I made a little X where I'm gonna drill the half inch holes into the wood, and then into the wood the other way, like an L, a little 90 degree turn. So this is the half inch drill bit, and I'm gonna drill down. I put tape for the depth. So I'll just drill down through the two by four with the drill until I get to that blue tape. And this is not easy. Wow. The bit really grabs the wood. Then this is the hole to the inside of the trap where that inside square was. You want to match up to the other hole. Whoa! And here you can see the holes match up. You can see the drill bit turning inside the other hole. Drilling these half inch holes through the two by fours is way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. So now all four pieces have the two holes 
the one in through the side and then the one to the tunnel in the middle, the L-shaped half inch hole. So I'm gonna screw the four pieces of wood together through the pre-drilled holes with the deck screws. You can see the box of them there in the picture. Ugh! Nice. So two screws in each piece, get them pre-started, and then put the four pieces of wood together in that, it's a square, but I call it like a circular pattern, the way they overlap with each other, one over the other. Make sure they're tight together and lined up square, and then just drill them down together. Oh, nice. Oh man, so much for pre-drilling holes, golly. Oh darn, I can't believe the wood split, even after I pre-drilled all the holes. So, I took the screws out and drilled a hole and I pre-drilled it all the way in and then squeezed the split pieces together. I probably should have made new pieces, but I'm pretty sure this will work. So much for thinking this was a simple design. <laughs> now to attach the lid for the jar. So I got a pre-drill, I got to make the hole in the center of the lid. So a little pilot drill, and then a little bit bigger drill. Go up in sizes. You can make the hole bigger than half an inch. You don't want to make it too big, but you want to make it big enough that lets plenty of light up into that square hole in the middle so that the bees drop down into the jar thinking that it's the way out. So just drill slow and this big half inch drill has a lot of edge so it's going to really grab. Don't lose a finger. Woo! Ouch! What do you think is the best simple carpenter bee trap design? Let me know in the comments. So I'll use a Dremel with a grinder stone to just smooth the edge and get it a little bit bigger. So there's plenty of room for the bees to drop down into the bottom. Then just attach it to the wood block that we made. And don't screw up like I'm doing and attach it to the wrong end. I can't believe it. This is unbelievable. I'm putting the lid on the wrong end, and I didn't notice until I was done, of course. Pay attention. First, I split apart the wood, and now I've gone and attached the lid to the wrong end. What else can I do wrong? So here's the top, just a square piece of plywood that I had. And you, I decided I want a little bit of an overhang. I almost messed up attaching the top. So here's the finished trap put together the right way. All I got to do is put the hook in the middle. I'm not sure how, but I finally finished this simple, yeah, simple carpenter bee trap. So the bee goes in this hole, travels through. I've got the overhang to shadow it a little bit because they like to be protected. They go in the hole and then turn and go into the center tube and drop down into the jar. If you have a friend that's having an issue with carpenter bees, please share this video with them. It's up to you to help a friend in need. Ask yourself, what can we do to protect our home from carpenter bee damage. What can we do to protect our homes and protect one of nature's most important pollinators? It's all about you living your self-sufficient life dreams, living happy, living fun-loving, and living carefree. Live life doing it yourself.